I'm Arthur King, Art Gallery Coordinator here at Diablo Valley College. I'm with Alexander Jackson, or Alex Jackson, who is a painter and digital artist. We're here to talk with him about his work and his relationship to DBC. So, Alex, nice to meet you here in your studio space. Um, if you could, please, um, tell me a little about yourself just to start off with here. How long have you been at DBC? At DBC? Uh, 17, 18 years, I think. Marvelous. And you've taught in which areas? I've taught in the fine art areas, painting, drawing, uh, color theory, uh, figure drawing. Um, what else? Uh, and then uh, a basic design. And then also in the digital media area, uh, digital photography, um, Photoshop, digital imaging, uh, and uh, introduction to graphic design. Marvelous. So where did you study at? Where did all this come from? Where did you start? Um, I went to the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, um, where I studied drawing and photography. Uh, that was quite a while ago. Uh, and I did um, my, got my master's in painting from UC Davis. Once I, after I moved out to wonderful California. Very nice. So what made you want to pursue art as a career? Well, you know, it was sort of my favorite thing to do as a kid from age four on. I always thought of myself as an artist. I, I don't think I ever really made a choice. You know, it kind of, it kind of got me. Um, you know, once I got to high school, I had to think about, well, what am I going to do? Am I, is this a, is there a job connected with being an artist? Uh, I think I thought I wanted to be an illustrator. So uh, that was kind of where I was heading. I went to art school and quickly decided that I did not want to be an illustrator. I didn't want to do uh, other people's ideas so much. And I've done illustration here and there, but kind of as a, as a central career, I didn't, uh, I thought I would be more suited for uh, uh, doing my own work and becoming a teacher. Because I liked, I, I liked, I thought my teacher, I liked what my teachers were doing. They seemed to like their jobs and, you know, they had their artwork and that's kind of where, uh, where I went with it. Oh, you know, yeah, like I said, I, I, and, and I ended up doing a lot of other stuff, you know, and a lot of other jobs, not art related jobs in my life and some commercial work, art commercial work, but, um, you know, it wasn't, uh, it, there was never, it, to make money, right? But there was never any choice, I don't think. So you had quite a journey then? I've done a few things. <laughs> Multi, a little multi-purpose, which is marvelous. So um, for you, uh, um, what is integral to the work uh, as an artist? So for you as, as an art maker, what is integral to you for that, for making the art making process? Uh, that's a pretty, that's a pretty tough one. Uh, it's, it's. I think for me, um, if I th if I try to think about what's at the core of it or what kind of keeps me going and makes me want to do the work is that I just am constantly looking at things and thinking about things that have no function or purpose and you know endlessly kind of fascinated by what's around uh, you know without uh, any necessarily any functional kind of um, and goal in mind. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, as far as, you know, anything essential or, or uh, kind of what's at the heart of why anybody does art, eh, that, that I, I don't know if I can speak for myself, let alone others on that one. <laughs> Okay. Well, in your making process, you just, can you describe anything about your um, studio practice? Is there something, a ritual that you have, something you need to do when you come into the studio and you go to work? Um, I would say my process is fairly chaotic. Um, if you look at my, my artwork, it looks fairly clean and organized and thought out. Um, but how I get there is a complete catastrophe. You know, the, the you know, I, I don't have any one 
place to find get ideas from I have a whole bunch of different parts I have images I have color combinations cataloged I have um, you know I take pictures a lot of things that I think I might be able to do something with and you know and I just kind of put them together um, in different ways you know I don't have a singular kind of approach to trying to um, to come up with what I'm going to do and and so it's uh, you know it's kind of self torturous you know um, but eventually I come up with something that I'm going to do something with uh, that's kind of my process you know I work on a lot of odd materials like not just canvas or board or you know I work on plexiglass and reflective signs and uh, and sometimes that kind of dictates certain aspects of the process like I can't uh, I can't erase something off of a piece of aluminum you know it, it, it's a little more um, I have to kind of uh, nail it down a little bit beforehand but then i always change my mind in the process so it's it's you know well, interesting. so <clears throat> so would you say that your practice then has changed over time or is it pretty much been the same way as you described from the beginning till now um it's kind of an evolving chaos how about that uh yeah i think uh when i switched to i think generally i've tried to become a little simpler in in my work, like not trying to put a million things in, but just a few things that kind of work right. Um, switching to digital, when I started working with digital imaging, which was uh, a couple of years ago, 1990, I guess, um, you know, that kind of allowed me to collect images and color stuff differently. I was uh, much more, I uh, took, took a lot more pictures all of a sudden because, you know, it was free pretty much not the camera, but, you know, uh, storage, like I wasn't buying film and, and also I could I start fiddling with ideas in Photoshop and, uh, you know, it kind of, it, it changed because of that, I guess, just my, uh, the ways that I could, uh, fumble around, you know, in this chaos. So, uh, I guess that sort of changed it to some extent. I mean, a lot. <laughs> Oh, very good. Well, you know, in your as, as a working artist, um, who is in your community of artists, and and you know, who are your fellow creatives? What kind of people are you? Do you sort of uh, glean towards? Uh, yeah, I that you know, I'm I'm kind of an I'm not that social a person. You know, I don't kind of go out and and socialize a lot. I I, I have a lot of friends. A lot of them aren't artists. Uh, a lot of them are musicians. I have a lot of friends who are photographers for some reason. Um, you know, some painters, but you know, I think uh, actually my colleagues at school, I'm not saying this for your sake, but uh, my colleagues at school, I think um, other teachers are kind of where I maybe have the most sense of, of community. You know, the art world is like, is a real like stink pit, you know? Um, but, um, you know, there is a sense of community, you know, at, um, you know, at uh, DVC and at, and at other schools uh, to a lesser extent. Um, but, you know, the, the word community, I, you know, as far as a community of, of artists, I, I don't know that, that that word community kind of gives me the creeps. I guess I'm kind of weird about that but uh, yeah I it sounds a little too closed you know like a like kind of like a little bubble and so anyway there you go did I answer that <laughs> you did that was great I mean it just really plays into everything else you've been saying the fact that you have this you, you look at the world in a very open way you're always looking for new and interesting things and uh, for you keeping everything open is important Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. So tell me, as, as an artist, what role does the artist have to play in society? What does that mean for you? Yeah, I came up with a few, um, you know, I think um, one thing that we are, uh, that we try to be is uh, marginalized kooks, um, troublemakers, you know, people willing to uh, explore and express 
confusing, inconvenient, and maybe even embarrassing ideas, right? We, you know, and the more we can make fun of ourselves and um, it, we can be an example of uh, an attempt to be free thinkers, right? I don't think, uh, I think a lot of people think of the product, you know, what is, um, what comes out of it and is it something that people want to look at or, or buy, you know, that there's that economy of it. Um, I don't, I don't really see myself as, as a, as kind of a factory of stuff for people, you know, you know, that's fine if people, you know, other people do, but, you know, I, 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 you know, I kind of see, you know, what's important about being an artist is about, uh, you know, maybe being an example of, of this sort of attempt to uh, think openly, right? Like I'm saying, I guess that's my theme. Ooh, marvelous. All right, then I have uh, one last question for you here. Mm -hmm. um, what is the best piece of advice you've been given and who gave it to you? Um, well, I'm, of course, I'm going to reframe that question, too. So uh, I cannot think of any singular um, piece of advice that anyone gave me um, that sort of stuck with me. I think that, uh, you know, when I think about what things people have said to me, usually it's things I don't agree with and um, maybe negative criticisms about. I tend to remember negative criticisms. You know, compliments kind of like they're nice and everything, and maybe they help you keep going. But the negative kind of criticisms, you know, I really, they stick with me and I think about them. And sometimes they're way off base, you know, and, but they made me think, you know. Um, and I think that's something, as far as what I could, you know, advice that I could give people is to seek out negative criticism, um, invite it, you know, and value it, even if people are totally off base, even if you totally disagree with them. Uh, I think there's more to learn from that than learning, you know, what you can learn from, you know, from compliments, I guess. Um, you know, I can think of some times, you know, maybe, uh, you know, sometimes in grad school where I was thinking where, you know, professors would come into your studio and, and talk to you and, and uh, you know, and go, oh, I think you should go this way and this is what I think your stuff is about and maybe, you know, how about this? And, and I would, and what it would do is it would sort of like, you're kind of going along and they go, yeah, you should do this over here. And then we'd go, like, you know, I, that's what I want to do. And now I know that that's what I want to do, right? It's almost like they kind of, uh, things that kind of get you to think and clarify you, clarify your thinking, even if it's, they're completely wrong. I don't know. That, that's, I don't know. I've gotten a lot of value out of that. I'm a real negative person. Totally negative. <laughs> In a fun kind of way. <laughs> Very good, very good. Well, okay, in closing then, is there anything that you'd like to say to the DVC audience and to the fellow uh, community of artists here at DVC? Hi, everybody. I look forward to seeing you again in person, every single one of you. And uh, thanks for uh, coming to our art show and seeing all the great artwork that uh, your teachers and friends are doing. Awesome, awesome. Well, Mr. Alex Jackson, Thank you very much for your time, for your insight. It's great to hear some of your backstories and a little bit about who you are and where you come from in all of this.